What is going on, everybody? It is April 9th, Monday slate. Got a really nice set of uh, 10 games. Good pitching to pay up for. Um, so if you are finished with your WrestleMania hangover like I am, uh, I'm ready to get back into the DFS swing of things. I am joined now, as always, by my partner in crime from awesomeo.com, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Yeah, Josh, uh, it's good to be on again. Second week going at this. Um, good pitching today, like you said. Uh, Coors slate, so should be interesting. Um, yeah, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty good slate. So Me too. We're not, no weather issues? Yeah, nothing Nothing that I'm seeing right now. Uh, that can always change, so just keep an eye on that. But it doesn't look like there's going to be any rain or snow or postponements we're going to need to deal with like this weekend yeah it's gonna be good i'm excited for a, a, a nice calm baseball night yeah and the i mean the weather's not great it's like 45 and 40 and you know there's like it's, even here in minneapolis it's 35 so yeah it's uh, cold and rainy here too in north carolina and yeah it was gorgeous yesterday but it's kind of crap right now anyway enough about our local weather where i don't have a baseball team no one cares <laughs> um first game up on the slate uh, Baltimore Orioles hosting the Blue Jays. Uh, Orioles with a 4.2 implied run total. Jays 4.1. That's a 4, 51% chance to win for the Orioles. Uh, Dylan Bundy going for Baltimore. J.A. Happ going for the Jays. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in either of the pitching, uh, at least on FanDuel. Uh, anything standing out for you here from DK? No, um... So I like both of these guys. Like, if if this slate was a little bit different, but they're eighty five and eighty one hundred, and yeah. I like a pitcher that's substantially cheaper that we'll talk about later. Um, but I think it's both pretty decent matchups. So Hap is a guy that he's decent in his first two starts: fifteen point one and twelve point two swinging strike percentage against the Yankees and the White Sox, which are two really tough matchups for lefties. And I mean, he's given us some hard contact, of course, but I think yeah. people will want to target him with or Baltimore bats. But um, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty good pitching weather here, and it is a good park. But these are two really good pitchers. Bundy has had two really impressive starts as well. Um, over 16% swinging strike rate in both of his first two starts. His whiff per swing percentage is the top 15 in the league. Um, yeah. The, the Blue Jays are top three in the MLB in swinging strike percentage as a team. So I think it's a better matchup actually for Bundy. So he'd be the guy that I'd be more interested, I think. But okay. I don't really want to target bats in this game. I don't know if, if you're on the same page. For the most part, yeah. Um, no, I'm not touching Bundy at all. He's the, actually the fourth most expensive pitcher on FanDuel today. Um, it's the you know the big three of Scherzer, mm -hmm. Syndergaard, and Verlander, and then a, a giant drop off in price. But Bundy is at the top of that list, so I think there's enough value below him that he's not a guy that I would go towards. I'd actually be more likely to grab Hap just because of his price on Fanduel. He's thirteen hundred dollars cheaper than Bundy, um, but I don't really love either of the pitching matchups here, and I'm not even I'm not super wild about any of the hitters. You can talk me into. You know the top half of the Orioles lineup because it'll be very righty heavy. So if you go like all the way down from you know one to five, I'd probably bail out at Chris Davis just to get enough righty bats against J.A. Happ. But nothing stands out as something that I would want to go crazy for. Yeah, I mean the the one guy really that I like in this game is Manny Machado. He's forty five hundred though, so it's not like you're getting a big discount. And then. I guess a tier below would be Jonathan Scope at 3,400. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not looking to stack either side of this. Um, I guess Justin Smoke on the other side would be a guy. Bundy does struggle with lefties. Um, but I, I'd rather just not really target this game. It's two pitchers that I have some respect for. Yeah, the, you know, they're implied totals. Nothing to write home about. Mm -hmm. There's enough offense out there in other games that i don't think it's a game that is going to need a big focus i wouldn't expect much ownership in this game really anywhere pitching or hitting yeah um let me just think you know like uh, i kind of always like travis because of his price at a position that i don't generally care about but i mean that's just 
he's not the kind of guy I want as a one-off second yeah. baseman. So yeah, just in a vacuum, I guess I just sort of have an affinity for him. But yeah, it's just it's kind of a blah game. I like the pitching as like I'd like to watch the game more so than I'd like to have parts of it in the mm-hmm. fantasy contest. Yeah, agreed. Um. Let's move on to this one, which I don't even really want to talk about too much because uh, Braves are looking to catch a beating today. <laughs> um, Nats hosting the Braves. Uh, Nats with a 4.5 implied run total. Braves 2.8, which is just, that's hurtful. 69% chance to win for the Nats. Shares are on the hill uh, going up against Atlanta and Julio Terran. Um, I love Scherzer today. He's my favorite pitcher on the board. He's the guy I'll have the most of on FanDuel. Um, I, we basically don't even need to speak about the Braves, I would imagine. Uh, where are you at on Scherzer? Yeah, so, I, I mean, Scherzer's been awesome in his first two stars. He's missing a ton of bats. He's an incredible pitcher. I, I don't think it's a great matchup for him, but, I mean, that doesn't really matter. So he's going to see five or... Looks like at least five or six lefties. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of lefty stick. Yeah, and so maybe a strikeout upside is down a little bit just because like Freeman and Albies and and Ciarte and even Marquecas are tough to strike out. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I I do like like Syndergaard and Verlander. I think a little bit better, and you do get a little bit of a discount on them compared to Scherzer on DraftKings. So. Like I get the Scherzer play, like he he could go out and strike out twelve and in six innings or whatever, but um, I don't know. I think I think it's just a little bit too many lefties for me on Atlanta, where uh, I don't think I want to pay up twelve six for Scherzer. I get it. Uh, there's enough pitching out there that you you know it doesn't have to be that sort of thing today. I just I have very little faith in the Braves in this situation. I don't know if that's just me overcompensating for my Braves homerism. But it just reads as 2.8 implied total for the Braves is the lowest on the board today. And that is, that scares me a lot. Yeah, like I don't think the Braves are going to get Scherzer out of the game early. Like I think Scherzer probably goes pretty deep, but. He feels real safe today for me. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think he's safe. Um, but yeah, he, he is going to be my focus. And I won't mind being wrong um, because if I'm wrong, it probably means that the Braves played well. So yeah, I do that a lot. I bet on uh, so I'm a Duke basketball fan, and uh, for one of Carolina's titles, I put a decent amount of money on Carolina, thinking like, okay, well, if they win, I win money. If they lose, I'm happy anyway. So sometimes I need those win-win situations. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're not touching Braves bats at all. That's just not yeah. the spot. Um, yeah. Like on a two-game slate or three-game slate, for sure. Then yeah, you could. You could target some Braves bats, but I think that's a little bit too cute for this slate. Yeah. Um, Nats bats, though, I think look pretty tasty. I mean, again, not reinventing the wheel saying that I like Bryce Harper tonight, but I like Bryce Harper tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's 5,800 on DraftKings. So. Yeah. 5,300 on FanDuel. That's so much money. Yeah, that's it's expensive, but... Um, like again, I think it was against Tehran. The first show we did this together was um, it was the same matchup, and we said that Harper had one of the best, if not the best, chance to hit a home run. That's probably the same case again tonight. So yeah, absolutely. Speaking of home runs, uh, I didn't look at anything from Friday night. Did Schwarber go yard? Uh, I didn't. I don't remember. <laughs> I can check. I forgot about it. He uh, probably yeah. didn't. I didn't look at anything after Friday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I wish I didn't. Um, <laughs> let's see. What was Friday? The That would be the 6th. Yeah. No, he didn't homer. Oh. Well, never mind. We'll, we'll cut that. <laughs> we'll cut that from the from the podcast. No, I don't think... We won't talk about it. Who's your I, guy? I think Matt Olson homered. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> Homer Blade. Nice. Uh, so I'm fine with a Nat stack, but it's going to be costly if you're trying to include Harper. Um, I don't love Eaton's price on FanDuel, but like I don't mind going righty-righty and having some Rendon and Zimmerman. 
Uh, I just, I'm not really confident in the Braves in this entire scenario, whether offensively or pitching wise. Yeah, so I like targeting Teron with left handed bats, but the Nats don't really have a lot of them. No. But Teron's given up 50% hard contact to righties this year, too. So he just doesn't have it right now. No. And uh, Zimmerman's cheap, 4,000. Um, Howie Kendrick's cheap, yeah. 3,600. And then, like, Eaton is expensive. But if you stack up that, I don't think a lot of people are going to want to pay that for Eaton on DraftKings. No. But, um, like, the rest of the guys besides Eaton and Harper are pretty affordable. So a full net stack here is not out of the question just because it's a lot of righty righty yeah like i could see myself grabbing a bunch of the gnats if i went with john gray mm-hmm. you know one of the one of the lower priced pitchers or you know mid-tier pitchers um but yeah no, just you gotta i mean you gotta pay up everybody knows what you're getting when you're trying to pay up for bryce harper yeah um that's probably it for me i don't have any like down you know, like down the order guys that look interesting. It's kind yeah, of just the studs here. Yep. All righty. Uh, Phillies and Reds. Uh, Phillies with a 4.9 implied run total. Reds 4.4. It's a 55% chance of a win for the Phillies. Ben Lively on the hill for Philadelphia. And Cody Reed is going for the Reds. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in either side of those guys. I certainly don't need much of uh, Cody Reed. Um, Lively's fine-ish on FanDuel. It doesn't really look appealing to me on DK. I, I'm going to assume we're on the same spot here. Yeah, no interest in either pitcher for me. I don't think Reed is going to be in the game very long. He's He doesn't really go long. He, he didn't pitch more than three innings in a game last year, so... Probably won't be out there for much longer than that. Steamer with the projected 4.9 walks per nine uh, for Reed is troublesome at best for uh, trying to pitch past the fifth inning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bats, though, I, I think both teams have people in play. And oddly enough, um, I think the Reds have like an oddly cheap stackable team today if you're not super worried about Ben Lively. And you shouldn't be. <laughs> Yeah, on DraftKings, they're like Winker supposed to lead off. He's 3,000. Votto only 4,200. Jeanette 3,200. Shebler 3,000. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's super cheap. So if you want to pay up for a couple pitchers on DraftKings, you can definitely get in a red stack. It's a decent road team total. 4.3 runs. Is that what you have? Uh, uh, I got 4.4 for the Reds. Okay. Yeah. So over, you know, mid fours and, um, I don't, I don't like Ben Lively. I mean, he's gotten over six XFIP against lefties since the start of 2017. Plays him 10% of the time. You just can't miss any bats and yeah. gives up a ton of, uh, well, not a ton of hard contact. So that's probably why he just sort of survives. But um, his Woba is up there, 364. And um, like individually, I don't have a ton of interest in guys outside of Votto, but in a stack, this is a team that could definitely put up a few runs on Lively and the Phillies bullpen. Yeah, yeah. Votto obviously transcends whatever you want to do. Stacks, you can run him off in a one-off very easily. Mm-hmm. He's probably one of the better players on the board today um, between yeah. just getting Lively, lefty matchup. Price isn't even bad. Like Very reasonable pricing, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. I'll actually have... A, I'll end up having a lot of Votto, whether he's packaged with any of these Reds guys or not. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and then Phillies, I'm cool with uh, most of the top half of the Phillies lineup. Um, Hoskins is crazy expensive right now. Fifty six hundred on DK. That yeah, he's not even healthy. Yeah, and he's not even like crushing the ball right now. It's not like he's had great results. I'm like looking through his batted ball logs. Um, so I don't know. I mean. I think he's like I don't think anything's wrong with him. He's fifty six hundred, and in the context of the Phillies stack, which I which I like a lot, you've got uh, Althair, uh, Kingery. He so this guy Scott Kingery, he's thirty three hundred. Uh, he's got a ninety four point five mile per hour average exit velocity okay. in his first seventeen batted ball attempts. 
which is like top 25 in the MLB and um, $3,300 um, and you can play him at second or third. And then Carlos Santana, I like him better against righties, but um, I like that two through five for Philadelphia here. Yeah, I agree. Um I just can't get over Hoskins' price. Like he's more expensive than Trout on both Is sites. He? Yeah, yeah. hundred bucks more on both sites. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it must be the DK because he smashed lefties last year. Yeah, so it must just be the DK algorithm. Um, and then FanDuel probably had him priced up at the beginning of the year. Yeah. So that's just a, that's a lot for him. Not that I. I mean, I. I he's obviously great, but uh, that's just. It, it's a healthy, healthy price. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm fine with, uh, you know, little bits of stacks of both of these guys, and particularly the Phillies, and, you know, they've just got a higher level of hitter outside of Botto. Yeah. Um, anything else that I like? Yeah, a two, three, four, five, I think for the Phillies would be the best combination of everything here. And then just Votto as a one-off from the Reds. I think that's probably the best summary of that game. Yeah, agreed. All righty. Cardinals and Brewers. Uh, Cardinals 4.3 run implied total. Brewers 3.7. Uh, 57% chance to win for the Cardinals. Miles McCollas going for uh, St. Louis. Julius Chassin going for the Brewers. Um McCullis is grading out crazy good for me. I'm anxious to see what you have to say there. Really? Is he? Um, yeah, like back, like doing backflips to get him in your lineup type stuff. Let's see. <laughs> he's, Maybe I missed he's something. He's 6,000 on FanDuel. So he's one of the cheapest pitchers on the board. Okay. He's 70, 73 on DraftKings. Um, I don't know. I might have to look into him a little bit more. I, I sort of wrote him off. To start when I was initially looking at this last night, but um, you know, if he's coming up huge in your model, then I'll have to uh, check on that a little bit. But nothing overly impressive that I see from his first start. Um, let's see. He went like six something normal, yeah. right? He gave up three homers, so that's a bit concerning. I mean, obviously, super super small sample, but um, five and two thirds and five Ks. You could probably. Talk me into him on FanDuel. The only problem with him on DraftKings is, again, there's a guy that I like that's going to be a lot more popular that I think is a way better play or cheaper. Sure. Yeah, like I like him on FanDuel so that I can go ahead and grab like two big-time expensive high-level bat stacks. Um, yeah. But Steamer has him 8.6Ks per nine, two walks per nine, and a 3.95 FIP as... Like, that's just, that's really good. And I didn't know a ton about him to, like, just speak about him in a fantasy sense. So I actually started looking into him once I saw how much green was popping up when I loaded all the data this morning. And I was like, okay, you know, that that steamer stat line looks good. Fangrass had a couple articles about how, like, he's for real. Um, and then the implied total, 3.7, is, you know, one of the tastier implied totals on the board today. I was like, okay, all those boxes are sort of lining themselves up together. So yeah. uh, I think that he's a guy that I'm going to have as, like, my flyer pitcher of the day. Because I like John Gray a little bit. And uh, I think Miles will be, like, my next step down to be able to get a ridiculously crazy bat stack that all, will ultimately underperform. <laughs> yeah, so, like, if this guy, I don't know. I mean, you can make a case for him on DraftKings if, if Garrett Richards. Garrett Richards is the guy I was talking about that I really like today. And he's going to be yeah. popular. So, like... If you just want to pivot or get some exposure, if you're making a bunch of lineups to a guy like Mikolas, then um, I don't I don't mind it at all in tournaments. It's baseball. Like, like, he could get lit up. It, it's sure. happened before. So yeah, uh, so like I'd say that he's probably like my third pitcher of the day. Uh, Scherzer will be, end up being the guy that I have the most of, and then. Uh, I just want to, uh, you know, I'm anxious to run him out there because I think that he can create a lot of interesting stuff on the hitter side for me. Um, from uh, from a hitter perspective in this game, uh, I like the Cardinals a little bit. Um, I'd be fine going, you know, Fowler, Fam, Carpenter, 
grabbing at least a little bit of the top half of this Cardinals lineup, but I think that I like Dexter Fowler every day, so I don't know if I'm just playing the same audio from everything we recorded last week. No, I like the Cardinals a lot here, actually. Uh, only 4.4 run total, right? Is that what you have, too? Uh, I, I got 4.3, so yeah, okay. you know, rounding and such. Yeah. Um, I like Fowler a lot. On DraftKings, they're super, super cheap. Yeah. 3100 uh, for Fowler, 34 for Fam, Carpenter, 33 Ozuna, 37 and Jose Martinez, 34 Carpenter so, is $400 more expensive on FanDuel than on DK. You don't see yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> I, I don't know if someone was like slated besides Chassin to pitch this game, but I don't know why the DK algorithm has so much respect for him. Like these guys are all priced way, way down. Yeah. So, and they're hitting the ball as hard as anyone as a team right now. Like they've like their four of their top five guys are in the top like 60 or 70 in average exit velocity when I was looking last night um, for the season. So like Jose Martinez, I love that for 3,400. Love Ozuna for 37. Yeah. And then Carpenter for 3,300 as well. So you can just stack them one through five. I have no, yeah. no problem with that. Carpenter for 3,300 is a really nice spot for mm-hmm. like what he provides in a lefty-ready matchup. Yeah. So Chassin, and Chassin just started against them uh, five days ago. He gave up 52% hard contact, but just kind of survived. So he, I mean, That's he probably got a little bit lucky. I, I haven't looked into it a ton, but 52% hard contact is pretty crazy yeah. just to go six innings or whatever he went. Yeah, you, every single one of those balls has to be going, you know, directly to someone. Yeah. Otherwise, you're in trouble. Yeah. Um, I don't really need anything from the Brewer side of this. Uh, so I, Eric Timms. Yeah, Thames and, and Shaw were the two guys that I was looking at. Just super cheap, 3600 and 3500 on DraftKings, um, just as one-offs, so... They're kind of expensive on FanDuel. So same price for 3600 on both sides. And then Shaw is actually $500 more expensive on FanDuel. So wow. they're a little cost prohibitive on that side. Yeah. yeah so I like a bit better on DK. Yeah, a lot better on DK. But yeah, I'm going to be I'm gonna be rolling with some pitching here. I'm anxious to see how that shakes out because Steamer loves this dude. Okay. I'll have to look at him more. Maybe he'll be in the, uh, in the pitching article the spotlight pitchers yeah maybe we'll see what uh we'll see what our boss has to say later today yeah yeah all righty next game up marlins and mets uh marlins with a three run implied total which is awful mets with a 4.3 run implied total uh the mets are 66 percent to win here um Jose Urena going for Miami, and then uh, Noah Syndergaard going for the Mets. Um, Syndergaard looks really good. I don't really have a ton of interest in Urena, uh, but Syndergaard's obviously someone that you know people are going to be looking at. Uh, I like Syndergaard more than I like Verlander, less than I like Scherzer. So that would be sort of my order of the three. Um, where you at on Syndergaard? Yeah, he's my top uh, spend up pitcher on the slate. Um, it's not that. great. It's not great uh, pitching weather. It's 85 degrees in Miami. Not so a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It must be nice to play there. But um, he threw 85 pitches in his first start, 92 in his second. So he could get up to around 100 here if he's having a decent start. And there's just so many Ks in this Marlins lineup: yeah. Brinson, Dietrich, Castro, Anderson. Um, Wallach, I mean, all these guys he can K pretty easily. So I, I love Syndergaard tonight. The the whiffs are there. The swinging strike rate is there. So I'm just going to have him as my top spend up if I choose to go with the high price pitcher like him. I get it. Uh, for some reason, and I know that sounds like ridiculous, or ridiculous way to start this sentence. Uh, it just, I just have shirt like Scherzer's just popping off the page like crazy. So much so that it's hard for me to adjust both of these guys in directions to get them like closer to each other. Yeah. I should probably have more Syndergaard than I will. I threw all the projections into Fantasy Cruncher before we started just to get an idea of 
uh, how the lineup builds were shaking out, and it was just overwhelming amount of Scherzer and uh, quite a bit less Syndergaard. And I don't love that idea when they both have such awesome matchups. Um, that my personal ownership should be a little bit closer for them since they're only three hundred dollars apart on FanDuel. So I'm gonna have to look in a little bit deeper to see, you know, maybe what I'm missing or why I'm so heavy on Scherzer. Yeah. But I, I mean, not that I shouldn't be, a, you know, great spot, but I don't like that balance on the two of them when I ran it the first time. And it has me a little concerned that I'm going too heavy in one direction. Yeah. I mean, I would, I mean, I have no issue saying like if someone says that Scherzer is their top pitcher. So I get it. I just think yeah. that I like the matchup for Syndergaard a little bit better. And I think they're pretty similar pitchers. So both like Definitely. top five or six pitchers in the MLB. Yeah. Um, and Scherzer against righties. Like, if if Scherzer was facing this Miami lineup, then I would be in love with him. But um, he's, facing, he's just facing a little a few too many lefties for me. So uh, I get it. That's where I'm at. Uh, we're not touching any Marlins bats. So No. No. Nope. Um, not one. Uh, I think a Mets stack could look okay. Uh, I like probably that <clears throat> top four. Um, because I'd have a lot of interest here in like Jay Bruce and Conforto. Um, I don't love Bruce's price all that much, but you know, I'm I'll take that lefty righty matchup when I can get it for Bruce. Yeah, the Mets are one of my favorite stacks on the slate tonight. Maybe maybe my favorite at this point. Oh, so, okay, let's do it. Yeah, it's, it. it's great. It's great hitting weather, and the top four is what I have right now. So if Conforto's healthy, he's four thousand. That's Drupal Cabrera for thirty three hundred. One of my favorite second base plays. Uh, Cespedes and Bruce both squaring the ball up really nicely. Both over ninety four mile per hour average exit velocity on this young season, and they shouldn't have trouble making contact with Urena. So that's where I'm looking at for stacks guys that um, I love stacking against pitchers that can't miss bats. And Urena is one of those guys. I mean, he can a little bit against righties, but um, three of the top four in the Marlin or in the Mets lineups are lefties. So uh, I think Urena got a, got pretty lucky in his last start against Boston. He went seven innings, seven Ks, but the swinging strike percentage was under ten once again mm-hmm. for him. So I don't think that's really real or sustainable. And I think he get crushed here. So I, I like agree. the Mets top four. I wish Adrian Gonzalez was hitting higher than sixth. <laughs> yeah, he's been hitting really well. Um, his average exit velocity is like top 20 in the league yeah. or something like that. Minimum salary on FanDuel tonight. Yeah. So I've got no problem with that in DraftKings. So not as great of a value over there, but yeah, for minimum salary, sure. Yeah, it's certainly worth a look. Urena can get a little fly ball happy, so leave one over the plate. Adrian's, Adrian's still got it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, and he's got good guys hitting in front of him, so he's yeah. going to be hitting with guys on base a lot this yeah. season. Yeah, we I nothing to talk about for the Marlins. That's they've got no shot. At, I, I'd, I'd be shocked if I had any part of any of them, even in a like a throwaway. <laughs> it's just yeah. they look real bad today. Yeah, not on any Marlins. Uh, we good to go, Rangers Angels. Yeah. All right. Um, there's not a line on this right now. I'm going to uh, double check that to see if anything came out. Oh, it did come out right now. Cool. This was not there when I started, so I'm going to update this a little bit. Okay. Um, Because I made up a line, and uh, I was a bit more aggressive. I had had Richards a little bit more of a favorite. So 126, 116. And a total of... Nine. Yeah. All right. Uh, Rangers and Angels. Uh, Rangers with a 4.3 implied total. Angels 4.7. Doug Fister going for Texas. Garrett Richards going for the Angels. Um, I know you were talking that you like Richards. I don't like him all that much on FanDuel. I 
like him a lot more on DK. And uh, for Fister, uh, just no interest in general. But yeah. Talk to me about... Talk to me about Richards on DK, because I'm okay. with you there. The $6,700 price point is is pretty nice for me. So he's 6700 yep. And then um, he doesn't need the win on DraftKings. I mean, it, it's nice. It's a few extra points, but um, strikeouts are king on, yeah. on DraftKings, especially. You don't have to worry about getting the win too much. Um, so I don't know. I'm confused why his price didn't go up. Like, I know DK does this... Um, dynamic pricing but he was like the same price just through a uh, nine strikeout performance in five and two thirds and now he's going up against a really strikeout heavy rangers team uh the bats for the rangers are really priced down so i'm not sure why richards wasn't priced up but um there's just so many k's in this lineup gallo chu mazara odor um all lefties that strike out a ton and richards k's over 30 percent of lefties since the start of 2017 He's got the 15th best whiff per swing rate this year, which puts him above guys like Syndergaard, um, Bundy, and Hap. He's only below Scherzer for guys on the slate. Hmm. And he's just too cheap. So He really like, is. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a dangerous spot. Like, Gal, like, if he makes a mistake to Gallo or Beltre or Andrews, like any of these guys, he could give up a home run or two. But I just see him getting so many strikeouts if he goes five or six innings here. He's too good of a pitcher in in a vacuum to be priced at sixty seven hundred tonight. Yeah, and it's a good matchup too, like yeah. really good strikeout matchup. Yeah. So if he gives up three or four earned runs, but he strikes out seven or eight. You just you're taking that for sixty eight seven hundred. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, the price was just shocking. He's eighty three hundred on Fanduel, which is a little bit more cost prohibitive. There's enough. Like, there's just too many guys jammed in that first tier after the top three that. I can't. I wouldn't want to pay that sort of price, um, but on DK, like it's. I don't know how you go a different direction. He's got a 366 projected FIP from Steamer. Like that's it's it's high level stuff. It's not. That's just that 6700 dollars price point is crazy. And when he like he had an 18.6 percent swing strike rate against Cleveland, which is a really <laughs> tough matchup. Yeah. And, and like, so when he's on, like he he could get double digit Ks in this matchup. Definitely. So, he like I, I just don't know how I'd go. Me being a one lineup guy, I don't know how I don't have Richards in my lineup tonight. Yeah, I assume you'll have Richards in one of the top three. Yeah, unless I'd pay up for Coors. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. But, yeah, it's it's probably going to be Richards and then, like, Syndergaard or Godley even we'll talk about later. Okay. Um, now, Bats. Uh I kind of want to like Joey Gallo, um, but I, it kind of scares me. Like it's, I feel like the Rangers are going to be one of two options. It, it's either going to go really well for them or really poorly. Mm -hmm. There's just so many lefties in the lineup that like they can chain that stuff together. But I hate all of the pricing for Texas on FanDuel today. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I would be touching guys on on FanDuel really for the Rangers. Um, Gallo just makes sense, like in general, as a one-off because he can double dong. He's just it just takes one for him. He's always trying to hit a home run, yeah. and it's not like Garrett Richards doesn't give up runs and home runs and stuff and extra base hits. So um, when he's going to be low owned, he's always in play as a one-off. He's just forty-four hundred on DraftKings. So like if he was thirty-five hundred, then I would have more interest in him. But, yeah, um, I don't think for me on DraftKings that I'm really on any Rangers bats. Neither am I. Uh, Angels bats, on the other hand, very much um, interesting. Those top four against uh, Fister look fine to me, even though it is righty on righty. Uh, I'm, I'd be perfectly okay with it. I like that implied total. 4.7 implied total for the Angels is solid for today's slate. Yeah, it's a, it's a good total for sure. Third and highest? Is it third highest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good Good hitting weather. So some of the best on the slate. Um, <clears throat> so you can always play Trout. I mean, we don't really have to talk about him. No. But uh, I do like Valbuena as a cheap first or third baseman. And then Batani, if he's in the lineup. But I don't see him in the projected lineup. So I don't know if he's getting a day off after pitching an absolute gem yesterday or what 
Yeah, you're doing. I, I didn't see him this morning when I built this out. Yeah, so if he's somehow in the lineup, I don't know what exactly they're they're doing with him. How they're in terms of playing him as a hitter, um, but if he's in the lineup and batting like in the top six, which he should be, then uh, I'd like him quite a bit. Sure. What's his? I mean, I can just do this myself. I don't even know what his price is. I'm assuming it's in the three thousands somewhere. Let's say I took Cole Calhoun out of the lineup for shits and giggles. And put Otani in. Um, ah, okay, so this is just going to be all janky. Oh, this is yeah, this type is shit. Yeah, okay. Um, I guess I could I could look it up, but oh, I can get to it now, easily. I just didn't know if I could actually make it correct itself. Is he just not on the fan hitters list today? He might not be. Now he's just in as a hitter on FanDuel. Um, weird. And he's 4,200 on DK. So, yeah, I don't know if that's bizarre to me, but whatever. Yeah. That's what happens when people start playing both positions. They'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like the top four for the Angels. Um, I, I, I agree with you that Valbuena could be interesting. Uh, especially having the dual eligibility on DK, it's always helpful to have additional options. Um, mm -hmm. I don't ever really give a shit about Doug Fister. I just feel like he's never... I don't know. Like He's just like the most unassuming guy when I think about a fantasy start. Like I always feel like he's just going to be like slightly below average now. Yeah. And, like he, I don't he, know. Go ahead. No, no, you're good. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, he, he's good, or he's okay against righties, but it's not like you have to avoid stacking against him. So, like, Trout and Upton would be two guys that I like. I don't really like playing Albert Pujols, um, but Calhoun also, and then Valbuena. So those are the three yeah. or four guys that I say that, are, that I'm looking at. So yeah, it's like, kind of hard to stack them for me. I'm with you on, like, the righties and Fister. When those righties end up being guys like Trout and Upton, I get a little bit less fearful. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not as worried about, like, I don't think it's the best spot in the world for Cozart, but uh, when they're high level righty bats against Fister, I just don't think he has the stuff. Right. I'm, I'm with you there. All righty. Let's check out Twins and Astros. Twins, 3.6 implied run total. Astros, 4.6. Uh, Lance Lynn going for Minnesota. Justin Verlander on the hill for the Strohs. Um, Verlander is my least favorite of the three high-priced pitchers today. Um, not that I don't like him, but I just don't think this one's the best spot. And then uh, Lance Lynn is a is a no-go pretty easily for me. Yeah, it's it's freezing here in Minnesota, um, so you can make a case for Verlander. It's good pitching weather, um, as long as it's not too cold where you, where you can't grip the ball. But I don't think it will be. Um, he's going to be lower owned than Syndergaard and and Verland or and uh, Scherzer. Scherzer. I you can almost guarantee that. Yeah. Um, this Twins lineup is pretty tough though. Uh huh. So, um, pretty good balance in their lineup too. So I'm not I'm not crazy about Verlander here. I think the Twins are a pretty pesky team. Like guys like Maurer and um, Rosario. Like Morrison's got power. Kepler's got power. So it's, it's just not a really easy lineup for Verlander. Yeah, a lot and of lefty bats too. that are solid. Yeah, then like, yeah, Sano strikes out a ton, but he's also just as likely to go one for four with the homer. Right. So it's just, I don't know. It's just going to be a pass for me on Verlander. I completely agree. Uh, it's just not like, there's just too many other good games and options out there for him to stand out. Yeah. Is the, probably the easiest way because like it looks good. The you know the Twins implied total three point six is is nothing to worry about. It's just the other guys look better than he does. Yep. Um, I don't think I said it, but sixty Astros sixty one percent chance to win. Um, where do you stand on an Astros hitter stack? I'm not um, wild about it. Neither am I, and like that that scares me a little bit because. 
you can almost always make a case for an Astro stack. But again, the weather's not great. Um, Lance Lynn is substantially better against righties than lefties, and there's four righties at the top. So I think he can just kind of navigate his way through the top of the lineup. Like, I do like Redick and Marlon Gonzalez quite a bit, batting fifth and sixth. So those yeah. would be the two guys I'm looking at. But I don't think I'm looking to full stack uh, even against Lance Lynn here. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with you. Um, there, everything looks fine. It's just... Okay, with ten games out there, there's it, it's one of those situations where you don't have to try to fit in everything like every high end name. Like if I had the extra money to do it, if I had lineups with uh, Mikolas, like I probably still wouldn't even really be outwardly focusing on the Astros because it's just like Lynn is good enough. So much righty righty stuff that like I, there's just better spots out there. Yeah. I like thirty nine hundred for Bregman on DK is not bad. Oh yeah, that's a good price. I mean, you like him better against lefties, of course. Yeah. But um, with all the other guys around him, like Springer fifty two hundred, Altuve fifty four, Correa fifty one, and then he just kind of sticks out. I yeah. agree. Yeah, it's I don't I mean maybe it's just like the sticker shop thing where if he was mm-hmm. four thousand it wouldn't look as ridiculous, but yeah. Yeah, I'd, it's just a kind of an uneventful game. I, Verlander will probably just pitch well. Nothing interesting will happen, and you know we'll forget that we even talked about it. <laughs> right. This one is going to be uh, well. Two of these next three are super uninteresting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Royals and Mariners. Uh, I've got three point nine implied run total for both teams. It's a coin flip game. Uh, Jacob Junis going for the Royals. Marco Gonzalez going for the Mariners. Um, on FanDuel, neither of those guys are in play for me from a pitching perspective. Um, let me look at it here for DK. I don't really see it for DK either, but talk to me about Junis because I think you mentioned him before we were starting. Yeah, I think he's... He's a good pitcher. I mean, he, he pitched seven innings, six Ks, 11.5 swing strike percentage in his first outing. So good first outing. Yeah. Uh, he's a guy that I'd be looking at. Um, I'd, I mean, I'd definitely be targeting him in uh, if I was MMEing, but mm-hmm. since I'm only one lineup guy, I'm probably just going to plug in Richards. Okay. Um, so that's the only negative here is that he's not Garrett Richards. I think it's a <laughs> little bit worse of a matchup than Richards has. So it's just a, a slight thing for me. I do like him a lot at that price in a vacuum, though. Yeah. I, I like... I, there's so many guys in that price range on DK that I would take. Like, I, Ignoring the fact... Well, I guess I can't ignore it. Uh, I like John Gray. You know, it's in Colorado, so that makes it a little tricky. But, like, Richards, McCullis for me... I mean, even like lively to an extent, um, I could get to all of those guys first. I think Richards obviously put leaps and bounds. It's just a really unsexy game. Three point, like both teams under a four in the implied run total is gross. <laughs> yeah, gross weather too, like forty five degrees. Um, wind blowing in a little bit. It looks like, so it's just it's not great either no. side. Like I, I'm almost fine just writing off this game maybe if you want to play junis junis is probably a good tournament play yeah like he he can definitely strike out some of these guys towards the bottom of the order but i think he's gonna have trouble with gordon and segura cano even Seeger. so you're gonna need garrett richards to not do well and some of these other guys like Nicholas, if he's gonna get some ownership too you're gonna need him to not do better than him and i don't like the odds of that so yeah um, I'm not even. I'm not super wild about anything on the bat side. Um, a lot of lefties projected to go for the Royals, which doesn't really jive with this with the matchup. Um, like, I don't know, Whit Merrifield maybe, mm-hmm. but I I feel like I'm forcing it if I tried to grab any Royals. Yeah, I mean Merrifield, and then. Uh, Jorge Soler, I guess he's just got some power. Yeah. Um, 42% hard hit percentage against lefties over the last year and change. 
So he, he's a fly ball hitter too. But that is a big, a big park, and yeah. it's the weather. It's just hard for me to get past this these cold 40, 45 degree weather games and try to take hitters from them. Uh, couldn't agree more. Um, Mariners hitters. Yeah. I mean, the lefties look great ish. On DK, I'm talking. Sorry. Uh, yeah. The pricing looks really good on DK for them. Like, if you can get Gordon, Cano, Seeger, I think that you can be pretty happy with that. Or at least, you know, you have the potential for it. Um, how's Junis at holding runners? I'm trying check. to think about for D Gordon. He's not on the sheet. It hasn't updated yet. So I don't know. I'll have to look at that. But uh, I, I rarely, rarely play D Gordon. So not, I'm not going to play him for 3,800 today. No, no. I, I don't know what he is on, on FanDuel. 3,500. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah. probably a little bit too expensive for me. Yeah, Both it's this, this implied total, I should just take that at face value. I don't yeah. think there's anything really here. Seeger in a one-off I don't think is I mean, crazy. I like Cano. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I like so Cano and Seeger were the two guys that I was looking at. Um, but the thing with Cano is that I'd rather play as Drupal Cabrera against Urena in better weather against a worse pitcher for a thousand less. So that's my only problem. I'm a hundred percent in agreement with that. Yeah, I think we've probably said more than we even need to. Yeah. Now the unique one: Rockies and Padres. Rockies 5.7 implied total. Padres 4.3. Uh, 63% chance to win for the Rockies. Colorado's going with John Gray and uh, San Diego running out Clayton Richard. Um, if you want to pay the premium for Rockies bats, you're going to have to do that. Uh, I like John Gray a lot, but I think that's probably just me liking John Gray a lot. Um, I'm going to need to nerf him a little bit. I think that he's grading out a little too high for me for a home game. Um, but I just like him as just sort of in general. And I don't really love the Padres as a met. Like, I'd only really be worried about Hosmer, and that's it. So it's a, it, it, I don't hate it as much. 4.3 implied total for the Padres is what keeps me, like, keeping Gray in my mind, even though it is in Colorado. Um, you Are you looking at Gray at all? Uh, not not at uh, almost 8k on DraftKings. Just it's a it's a price thing for me. Like sometimes he's priced in like the sixes in Coors, and then I'm then I'm looking at him like, uh, but I, I just don't want to play an 8k pitcher in Coors uh, when there's when there's other guys on the slate that I think are in just as good of matchups as him and don't have to deal with the super thin air. Yeah, I'm hoping that uh, this being a game in cores that it will naturally keep gray's ownership down um because i i like the matchup a lot the only downfall is simply just where they're playing this game right yeah he, he will not be owned i don't think on either side right like there's just too many guys that are around his price range that people are going to talk themselves into especially on FanDuel. like um like all the guys above him that i'm looking at right now um junis richards godly bundy and then the three big guys um they're all going to get some ownership so i doubt gray gets even three to five percent on fanduel in most tournaments that makes me so happy <laughs> like yeah i'll be happy to have seven or eight percent yeah and it's an mme higher play. than the field yeah it's an mme play like i wouldn't do it in single entry or like three max or anything like that nope but i'm with you like we've seen pitchers and cores have success and gray did have success at times in Coors last year. So it's not, it's a really good matchup on paper. Yeah, it's like, there's just, I don't, I'm not worried about any bats in the Padres lineup outside of Hosmer. Yeah, he went, obviously a little bit of a different team, but he went six innings, seven Ks, four earned against the Padres in Coors last year. Okay. Um, And then five innings, seven Ks, and no strikeouts again in Coors, or I'm sorry, Five innings, seven strikeouts, no earned runs in Coors against the Padres last year. I like so it. he's he's done well against them in Coors. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't hate the play. I just don't like the price on DraftKings. Yeah, I, I wouldn't love him as much on DK. Uh, 
All right, I guess we got to talk about Coors Bats. Um, yes. Prices are jacked up, as they should be. Uh, two, three, four, five. LeMahieu, Arenado, Desmond, and Story. Yes, those are the like the the obvious guys that I'm looking at. Uh, They're going to be owned. Would, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I mean, people are going to play Bryce Harper. You can't really play like Harper and Desmond and Arenado and Blackman. So, is Blackman going to play? He's got a questionable tag. What I'm looking at. Oh, I don't know. I didn't look into it. So yeah, he's day to day on DraftKings. It's lefty lefty matchup. People may just avoid him if we don't get the lineup super early and just plug in like Harper, yeah, um, or Hoskins or something like that. But I do love these Rockies against Clayton Richard. Yeah, uh, I don't think Clayton Richard's stuff tr- translates well in Coors. The sinkers aren't going to bite as much, and that's his bread and butter. He got absolutely smoked one start there last year in Coors, and then he gave up four runs in the other one. Okay. So he's just he's getting hit really hard by righties, and the Rockies have a bunch of good ones in their top five, and then Blackman to lead off. So you can just go one through five if you can fit it on DraftKings. But the other guy that I like, assuming he catches, is Chris Iannetta. Yeah. So, and he's 4,000. If he's hitting seventh or eighth, people probably won't play him, but I love him tonight at yeah. 4,000. The, the heart of that Rockies lineup should be on base pretty regularly here. 5.7 implied total is... Whoa, my chair just dropped itself out. <laughs> oh, it scared the living crap out of me. Whew. Okay. Right. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, like LeMahieu, Arnado, Desmond, and Story. I, with that implied total, I have a hard time believing they just... They don't all have a big day. 5.7 is so big. 0.8 runs more than the second most implied total, which would be the Phillies. There's just going to be runs on runs on runs, and Clayton Richard is just not set up to make that go well. He could have a real early exit. Yeah. he. It's it's a tough matchup just in general. And then you throw in Coors, you throw in his pitches aren't going to be moving as much. So he could get just rocked here. And I'm going to definitely try to get in some um, some Rockies hitters. Like, I could see him only pitching to Arenado twice. Yeah. Um, and then the bullpen, I don't think, is anything special for the Padres, if I remember correctly. Um, they actually have a good XFIP, but uh, let's see what else. I don't know. I mean, I'm not scared of the Padres' bullpen, so... No, I'll have a uh, decent amount of the two, three, four, five. Um, probably not with Scherzer all that often, but even with a little bit of Gray, um, McCollis, Garrett Richards, maybe. I just don't like that price on FanDuel. I need to start yeah. playing on DK, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, did we talk about uh, Padres bats? We did not, um, but I think we can. Okay. Yeah, just Hosmer for me is too cheap, 4,300. Mm-hmm. Gray does give up some lefty power, and Hosmer is – he was a different player last year. He changed his swing, and he's hitting a lot more fly balls, a lot more homers. So I don't think people like playing Hosmer, but for 4,300, I'll gladly play him here in Coors. Yeah, agreed. Um, and then Gray struggles to hold runners. So you can make a case for a Padres stack because they've got a lot of speed at the top of that lineup with Margot and Perella, but um, Perella would probably be the guy that I'm looking at for 3,700 in Coors. Yeah, Margot, 2,200 on FanDuel. Oh, yeah. So you kind of have to look at him. Just to get a leadoff hitter in Coors for that price, it, yeah. it's as if they adjusted the prices for the Rockies, but not the Padres. <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not like um, – it's not like Gray's going to throw a complete game shutout here. Like, they're going to see other pitchers, too. Yeah. So, even if he's on his game, I don't think he throws more than six or seven innings. I mean, I hope so, he does throw a complete game shutout. Yeah. Because yeah. I'll probably be heavier on him than other people. But, um, yeah, that's just like it's, the Padres' prices are just super neutered. Like, you yeah. know, Renfro's 2,200. Like, I, you know, I, I get why these guys aren't spectacular hitters or anything but 
to just be in Colorado. Did you think shot. this? Do you think the stack's gonna be low owned? Like I think it's gonna be pretty low owned as a as a full stack. The top Padres? five, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you can pay a ton of money for Harper and uh, like these these Colorado guys, or you can stack a team with in Coors with uh, one of the top three and then like uh, Richards or something like that. So that's going to be something I'm going to consider. I mean, I don't love the idea of stacking against John Gray, but no. just from an ownership perspective, if you can stack up a not chalky team in Coors, like that's something that I'll be looking at for sure. Yeah, I'd be trying to avoid Christian Villanueva. I think he's mm-hmm. significantly overpriced for this scenario. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't get the price. But like Margot and Renfro's price, at least on FanDuel, twenty two hundred for both of those guys is interesting mm-hmm. for where this game is being played. Four point three implied total for the Padres is not bad. It's not great, but it's not cratered. Like they're getting some sort of boost there. Yeah. But for me, uh, I like Gray more than most people will. Um, and then Rocky Stack, all those righty guys in a row look pretty tasty. Yep, I'm with it. And now one last unfun game to look at. Giants and D-backs. Uh, Giants with a... Did I not enter Arizona's lineup in? Did I really do that? Or did I just stop? <laughs> No, it's there. Why aren't they pulling through? Oh, God. I, now I remember why. Oh, uh, you guys spell it out. Yep. Yeah. So they're, it's, they're the Diamondbacks everywhere except for MLB.com schedule where they're the D-backs for some mm. strange reason. And I haven't fixed the like look up for it. So <laughs> anyway, Giants, 3.6 runs. Great production quality here coming from me. <laughs> 3.6 runs for the Giants. 3.9 for the D-backs. It's a 54% chance to win for Arizona. Derek Holland going for the Giants and Zach Godley going for the Diamondbacks. Um, I don't, I'm not going to have either of these guys on FanDuel. Uh, I would not have either of these guys on DK, but I think you're going to talk to me about Godley. Yeah. Uh, I don't love the price for Godley, but I think he's going to be pretty low owned. And it's a good pitcher's park, one of the best in the MLB. And he didn't have a great start in his first start, but he the, the movement and everything, the velocity was fine. He made a couple of mistakes, um, got lucky with some barrels a few times. Um, I think he only had one strikeout or something like that, but hmm. I don't mind going back to him here. I think like everything checks out fine. I don't think he's hurt or anything. I think it was just kind of a bad start for him, and he got lucky. Um there are a bunch of K's in the bottom of this order, um, and I'm not really scared about the power here for San Francisco. It's only a 3.7 run total. Um, I do like Godley quite a bit here. I think he's still got great strikeout stuff, great swing and miss stuff. So for 9800 9, not my favorite price, but... Yeah, that's a really, really not great price for him on DraftKings. <laughs> yeah, it's just he still is a, a big discount over guys like Syndergaard and... Um, Scherzer so I think he I don't know if he's got the same upside as them he, he doesn't in this matchup but I think he can come close to them in terms of point per dollar so I don't sure. mind him okay um, um, and then oh Holland he's wow, we're he's not, awful yeah he's not in play for me <laughs> yeah don't don't play Derek Holland uh, I don't really have any interest in Giants bats neither do I um Diamondbacks, on the other hand, I can get talked into a bundle of. Mm-hmm. Which um, ones are your favorites? So, they should, like, I mean, lineup-wise, everything outside of Peralta should be coming up aces for them. Goldschmidt looks great. Uh, he should have a pretty nice night. Where he's, Where's his pricing for first base, comparatively speaking? All right, so he's first 100 more than Freeman... Like, I would prefer Votto to Goldschmidt from a price perspective and just, like, from the matchup perspective. But I don't have any problem having Goldschmidt either individually or in a stack. Um, yeah, just because I, 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 I you know, it's Holland. 
is, is sort of just the answer to it all. Uh, if Holland makes even the slightest mistake, Goldschmidt's going to make him pay. But give me give me Kettle Marte, give me Goldschmidt, give me Pollock. Um, I'm happy with like a decent amount of that 2-3-4. I don't really care for Owings all that much. Um, I don't really love Nick Ahmed's price. If I had to have Peralta with the rest of those uh, righty bats, that's fine. Um, because, again, I'm not super worried about Derek Holland. Uh, so I would I don't have any problems going 1-4 to four here. Yeah, love Goldschmidt. He's one of my favorite plays on this entire slate. Holland gives up 40% hard contact and a 403 Woba to righties. Hmm. Your 6 XFIP. That's He's brutally just, bad. Yeah, 1.81 whip over the last year and few games. Um, it's just a great matchup for Goldschmidt, Pollock. Uh, I like Marte's price on DraftKings, 3500 Not really interested in Peralta too much, even though he's projected to lead off. And then another guy that I have interest in as a punt is Jeff Mathis if he plays. 2300 has a 43% hard contact rate against lefties going back to last year. And... I kind of want to see what the D-backs do with this lineup, if it's going to be what it's projected to be right now or if they're going to switch things around because then I might have a little bit more interest in the full stack. But I do like the 2-3-4. Yeah, it, it's that goldschmidt Paula piece of it in particular just mm-hmm. looks real tasty today. Um, yeah. It's just so easy to make Derek Holland pay for his mistakes. Yeah. Holland is is awful. Like... I think he's the worst pitcher on this slate by by a pretty wide margin. Yeah, brutal. Um, yeah, I might actually agree with that. <laughs> he's he's bad. I'm not a big Marco Gonzalez guy, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, do I still have this open? I don't. Um, so I'm going to hop over to Fantasy Cruncher, throw the projections in, see what gets spit out quick. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to add for that game? No, that's that's about it. So I like the Dimeback stack. I do like Godly a fair amount tonight. So he might grow on me as the day goes on. Yeah, that we're going to be on it opposite ends of the spectrum for Godly. So okay, fair uh, enough. I'm anxious to see. You can tell me I'm an idiot tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I I ran this right before I started here. So this is just the projections I have in. Like I said, overwhelming amount of Scherzer, um, and. Syndergaard significantly more step down on. Uh, I'm going to take a deeper look into this. I'd like to bring those two numbers a bit closer together Mm -hmm. uh, just from a comfort level because I think they both look good. I don't think that it should be that level of gap between the two. But uh, I like the rest of the the way that's popping up. 9% gray is like the perfect amount in my opinion. Um, Lots of Votto as expected. Mm -hmm. Uh I'd like to see a lot of Ryan Zimmerman there. That makes me kind of happy. Um, there were some other things. There's Bo- uh, Astrobel Cabrera coming up as the second most on second baseman for me would be would be nice. That's probably too much Travis, but I don't know. I'm just I'm personally into that too, so I don't know. It's bad sometimes. <laughs> I have like I have a weird affinity for the Blue Jays, and I don't know why. I don't I I I can't explain it. Like. I've never cared about the Blue Jays. I've never cared about anybody that's really been on the Blue Jays. But for some reason, like this year in particular, I have like this weird back of my brain interest in the Blue Jays. I think everyone has those teams kind of in, in DFS that you, you gravitate to. Yeah. Like mine last year was the Tigers, and I would just stack them up, and they would always disappoint. But the numbers were saying that they had a ton of positive regression coming, and it kind of just didn't come for like Miguel Cabrera and, and Victor Martinez and guys like that. So. I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look. Let's dump it in DK and see what pops out because that's going to be – that's usually the more interesting one in my opinion. FanDuel fits a certain mold, whereas DK with all of the uh, ability to have people play in multiple positions, two mm-hmm. pitchers, like the, the the structure of whatever comes out using my stuff is night and day. Yeah. All righty. I don't know if I'm going to play a ton of baseball tonight or just like a little bit of baseball tonight because there's a pretty big NBA slate. What's hockey looking like today? There's no hockey today um, because 
the Stanley Cup playoffs start on Wednesday. So everyone finish their games up for the season this weekend. Playoffs are set. And I'll be back Wednesday to write some DFS articles. I think it's three games to there start off the playoffs. So it'll be abbreviated articles, but there'll still be some good information in the spotlight plays and the stacks of the day. And then we'll have Osmo's rankings, of course. So we'll still have hockey content flowing in. Perfect. All right. 100 lineups for the main slate, DK. Yeah, overwhelming amount of Scherzer, but that doesn't surprise me. Okay, yeah, I might have to look into that a little bit more. I want to see what what the the numbers are saying about Scherzer. Well, more Syndergaard there, too, 35%. Yeah, yeah so um, a lot of gray, too. Yeah, I think, I think that I need to make a manual adjustment to gray a little bit more so than the park adjustment that mm -hmm. I have in there. He's just coming out too rosy. Or maybe yeah. I'm just wrong, and that's what it should be. He's a good tournament play. Like, yeah, 100%. Everyone, everyone fades the pitchers and cores, and um, this is a really not good Padres lineup. So, I'll say this much. Speed. The fun. first six guys on here for pitching are the six guys that I would want to have in some order, but the proportions are off. Like, I would want more Richards what's, in lieu of what's Ray. That? You, you didn't hear any of that? <laughs> no, I, you, you cut out. Oh, okay. Uh, the first six pitchers that are popping up from the ownership are the six guys that I would want the most of on DK. I would just want less Gray and way more Richards. That's fair. I'd probably, that's, I'd probably those go. Are the guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking to spend up on some bats. So I'd probably bump down Scherzer and Gray a little bit, maybe add in some more Godley and, and Richards. But <clears throat> I like Syndergaard a ton. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm sort of with you there. That's more Tucker Barnhart than I would have expected. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why he's coming up so high, but he is batting six. It looks like, and he's twenty eight hundred. So yeah. that makes sense at a, a weak catcher position. Right. A lot of auto, which makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. it looks like the best first uh, baseman today from a value perspective. Wow, loving the Reds, loving the value of the Reds. So the way that I'm reading that then is that they're willing to pay up for two bigger pitchers yeah. and to eat those costs by grabbing a cheap red stack, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's a, it's a perspective that I probably wouldn't have immediately gone to. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of moose tacos for somebody that I don't think we said his name <laughs> while we did this. Is it, isn't that lefty lefty? Yeah. I don't, I don't get that. Yeah. I don't, I don't love that much. I want to look back at that. 3200 that's not a horrible price. I mean, I'm, he's not going to be in my lineup, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't love that at all. I certainly don't love it at 37%. But lots of Fowler, lots of Reds. So I'm anxious to see how that Red stack will do if that would be a, if that would be a solid move on DK when all is said and done. So I'm going to secretly be paying attention to the Reds-Phillies game tonight. <laughs> All right, so for me, um, Scherzer is going to be my guy on FanDuel, and then uh, my next two guys down the line are going to be uh, uh, John Gray and then Miles McCollis for the Cardinals. Um, you're going to be more Syndergaard, Syndergaard, Garrett Richards. Syndergaard, Garrett Richards, Godley, um, maybe Junis, um, but he's probably the, the fourth guy. Out of those, like I, I don't have anything against Scherzer. I want to make that clear. I think he's a, a fine play. Yeah. Um, I just think Syndergaard is where I'm leaning to tonight. All right. Uh, you got anything else we want to add? No, just look out for hockey on Wednesday. I think we'll be back tomorrow, and yeah, hopefully making some money tonight. That's my plan, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spent a lot of it this weekend, so I need to make yeah. it back. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, so that is it. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you enjoyed this video, we'll have content throughout the day. Uh, spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks. Uh, rankings will be out, I would imagine, soon-ish. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys again in the morning. Have a good one, everybody. Good luck.